The Celtics, they have this phrase that says, the thin places. And what that means is it's a place where the curtain or the wall between uh, eternity and our reality is so thin that you can actually start to see and maybe start peeking into it. So for me, photography can be that, where you can actually experience something at an image and it recalls things. For me, when I see an image and it does something for me, it's probably no different than a parable that Jesus spoke. All of a sudden, in just one hit, bang, it's like, wow, there's something there and it's telling me a story. And that's kind of my dream when I take a photograph. Is that going to tell the story? That's what I really wanted to do. The North Shore is one of the most beautiful and famous parts of Hawaii, full of surf culture and natural beauty. Today, Kalo on the street becomes Kalo on the beach as we hang out with Peter David Klaproth, a guy who has the unique ability to capture the beauty of God's creation. Photography is just one of the ways he has found to minister to the community on the North Shore and beyond. Okay, so you got to have a coffee. Number one priority, right? Got to stay awake. <laughs> All right. The whole idea is you want the beans to be ground and you want to just make that coffee straight away, compress it, and that, that's the freshest coffee you'll get. So this is Molokai coffee and it's super expensive, but it is so worth it. This is the best you're going to get. Okay. All right. Oh my it. gosh. Wow, that is really good coffee. And that'll get us going. Whew, ready for the day. Ready. I don't know how old I was. I was probably 18, 19. And I love photography and I thought, oh, I, I got a mail order of a Canon AE-1. So I started shooting, but I love Yosemite. I mean, as, as a kid, we'd go there every summer. And uh, living in Southern California, going up to Yosemite, my mom just loved the place. So every summer I was out there shooting and sure enough, ran into Ansel Adams. He has a studio there or a gallery and uh, saw his stuff. And I think that's probably what triggered it. He is well known, probably one of the pioneers in, in photography. I mean, his early stuff starts like in um, 1920. I remember growing up thinking, I just want to do that. And it, to me, it's kind of simple, but try and do it. It's a lot harder, <laughs> right. right? This is the east side of the Sierra Nevadas. And uh, I love it because you've got this bright range of incredible mountains. Then you've got these dark hills. And if you look really closely, if it's a bigger print, you would be able to see it. There's a horse here in the light of the sunrise. It gives a perspective. I can see that. And if there's one that caused me to get into photography would be this one. Again, you have to remember, he climbed up to a point uh, to get this shot, and it wasn't with, you know, a digital SLR. It was with a big box, uh, a wood tripod, wow. super heavy, hiked up to this very high point and shot this. Commitment. Very big commitment. And again, it's 1927. And when you shoot with those big 8x10 cameras, when you look at the back of the camera, you're looking at the image upside down. So, you're, you know, so composing it would be really bizarre. So I guess for me, that's, I don't know, this stuff really uh, speaks to me. And it was a dream to always capture this. I can see uh, why he was your inspiration. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he was really a pioneer for photography, taking photography and making it an art form. Mm. You know, lots of times... Uh, 
we forget about that. Most people thought photography was never really an art form. What's the big deal about it, right? But no, actually there is an art to it. It's, it's really, there's a lot to it. And it happens while you take the shot and as you process the shot too. Right. So, and even printing the shot, even today is really important. After visiting Kauai and hitting the uh, Nepali coast, I remember we were in a Zodiac boat and then it hit me, I thought, you know, this Nepali coast and Yosemite are the two places on this planet that just moved me. Mm. You know, there's just something about it. It's just amazing to see God's hand and, and His creativity for us, you know, and reaching out to us. Pete and I, we go back to Calvary Chapel, West Covina, probably 1980 and uh, we did ministry together. I was going to film school at the time and the ministry was getting involved in, in video. They had a video camera and I saw Pete and a couple other guys working it. If you ever see how directors and cinematographers work, you gotta find that guy to be able to visualize and capture his vision, right? So we work as a team like that. And then, you know, Pete has such a creative eye. It didn't surprise me that, you know, some of the photography and what he's doing, he's just always had good composition, good, uh, you know, just, I think, just a gift from God. Pete has had a lot of suffering in his life, but he also has an extraordinarily deep and abiding faith. And so somehow he's able to capture the pain and the beauty and the majesty and the chaos in his photography. It's, it's extraordinary. Pete's photography really captures the moment and it feels to me like it's capturing action. It may be because he does a lot of wave photography and so when you're looking at it you really, you almost feel like you're seeing motion but you're not because it's a still. He travels around and he has like a really good eye for just detail and perspective. Pete's a go-getter, he's always moving, he's always doing something, he's always recreating himself. He loves the Lord of course and just wants to serve and do whatever the Lord calls him to do. I grew up in a, in a, a Christian home, but I, I always felt it was a bit over the top and overly emotional and I really struggled with that. I didn't feel like it was real. I didn't feel like that was me. So I walked away, did my thing. When I got to the end of high school, I really started questioning life in general. Like, oh, there's got to be a whole lot more to life than what we see. I'd say, God, if you're real, you need to show up. You need to show me. So I got to work this stuff out. But I knew from my Christian background that it was a two-way street. So I knew to go to the Gospel of John. That was a standard thing to do. So I started reading John, and then by the time I got to the end of it, I knew I, there was a moment and it was when he was being crucified that it just hammered me. Like I just fell to my knees and said, Lord, you know, okay, I know that you are God. Because I started seeing all the things that he was saying was so radical. I didn't even realize that. You know, growing up in church, you know, you picture the Jesus with the, you know, drawing his fingernails and stuff, and he was just holy, but that's not who Jesus was at all. If you read the, if you read the Bible, you start realizing, man, this guy was radical. And that's what changed it for me. So I said, yes, Lord, I want to live my life for you. God gave Pete the opportunity to use his giftings and ministry all over the world, creating music videos, short films, and beautiful artwork. I moved from California to Australia to help plant a church. Went through some rough periods and times there, but the blessing out of that is I met my wife, Sharon. He was my best friend and he was the first person in my entire life that I felt that I could, that he would not laugh at me and he, I could say the strangest thing to him or something that was really like embarrassing and he would listen to me and he wouldn't make sport of it. Having Sharon in my life has been great. She's been so encouraging for me. We also have two sons and they're a blessing too. The foundations of our friendship and our love for the Lord have helped us through the roughest times. So it's having God at the center and a genuine friendship. After 20 years in Australia, God called Pete and his family to Hawaii, where he would do much more than just photography. I have a lot of respect for Pete. Um, he's in a season of life where many men will be setting up their lives to, to stop bringing change to the world. He said, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move to a land that's foreign to me. I'm gonna sell my home and I'm gonna 
help bring change to a community that really seems to need it. And Pete's heart just to kind of see the North Shore kind of change for God is amazing and that's something that um, is super inspirational. One thing we started to do here on the North Shore was do a photography workshop that people could come in and it was a great opportunity to connect with the community and teach them photography from square one all the way through. We'd go out and shoot sunsets and stuff, it was great. In high school I took some classes and then this workshop just I learned so much more. Like just like the details of cameras and um, just like composition and even Lightroom and stuff, the more processing aspect of photography. If I, then I, release it, I just turn it on to oh. see if it's there. So yeah, if you release it, there? it'll go away. You see it? Just kind of tilt it back and forth. Oh yeah. Right off the bat, we, uh, my sister and I were joking that it's like photography seminary. You know, we're talking about theology and then he's teaching us, you know, how to adjust the exposure on our camera. And I've really just loved integrating, you know, that faith and the learning aspect of it. And as Christians, I just think that's really important to bring faith into every aspect. And so, you know, you can take God out of it if you want, but he's the one creating the waves and painting the sunset. And so just, you know, taking that picture and being like, man, guys, like God is so cool. And I just love being able to freely talk about that and have him as the teacher and the mentor be able to encourage us and teach us that as well. He would just incorporate like the spiritual aspect of God's nature and just how we can capture that with photography and what a privilege that is. So this is where I go, right? When the sun's setting and or, and or if the waves are big. Dude, you have like the greatest backyard in the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah. Front yard, dude. This front is your yard. front yard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we do we do a, a, a beach service Sunday night. I teach it right here. Okay, we gotta go. Oh, I, do anyway. I always thought we live right across the street at the beach. Why don't we use it somehow? I thought, well, if we do this, we have to change it up a bit. Let's make sure the messages are for anybody. So if anybody walks up and sits down, it's not going to be filled with Christianese or anything. It's going to be something that's real, you know, street level, or I should say sand level, right, at the beach. Pete, man, has come here and he's been, um, I don't know, just really pouring into the community. He started up a church service that he meets up here on the beach for the sunset hour. And I mean, it's really cool. Get to see like all the young adults come out and want to be a part of that, watching the sunset. But Lord, we just really ask, Lord, for your guidance and your, your anointing on her. For Reese, Lord, for being that strong father for Asiya, Lord. I pray that you would just anoint him too, Lord. And Father, you would just unite them together as they are a new family. And people come, they hear the music and they want to, you know, they want to um, sit and listen. Everybody wants to go to the beach at sunset. So, hey, we can do church and do sunset. Great. But I also learned from a, a pastor, he was an associate pastor at Calvary Chapel in, in Costa Mesa. And he said, you know, Pete, it's not about your ability, it's not about your inability, it's about your availability. And that kind of became my goal in life. If somebody asked me, can you do this? I wasn't afraid at that point to say, well, I've never done it before, but I'll give it a shot. You know, and that's kind of how life has been. So in ministry, did that quite a bit. Ended up uh, uh, doing big outreaches. We're actually here setting up for Sunset Fest. We've got a bunch of uh, local musicians and uh, we have local vendors that are here and some food trucks in the front. And anybody who lives on the North Shore knows that when winter hits, this place swells with a lot of people. So we're here to bring a bit of hope to the community. This is all about the North Shore community and the surf culture here. So grab, grabbing surfing icons and legends and professional surfers uh, who already are Christian and are already involved in the community, bringing those guys in and just have them simply share the love of Christ from their perspective. You know, God's definitely raised up a few amazing surfers and athletes and ambassadors for Christ. Uh, some of which we'll be speaking tonight, like Aaron Gold, uh, professional big wave surfer and Reef Hazelwood, WQS warrior from Australia. You know, living in Hawaii, I mean, land is a premium, especially a church that has this size facility right here across one of the best surf breaks of the world. I just love that, you know, his passion is there and that 
he's putting the time and he's setting these kind of things up and, and has a heart for this community to do that. You know, we need that here in our community. The sand feels so good. Yeah. I've never felt better sand. Yeah. I feel like I'm exaggerating everything. You are, man. You're just, you, <laughs> you haven't been out in a while, have you? <laughs> So photography is interesting because it's a medium that takes something that's technical in order to grab the creative aspect. So it's, it's a technical and creativity thing that marries together. But ultimately, what you're doing is you're painting with light. You deal with dynamic range and uh, what that means basically is the spectrum of light. You've got everything from black all the way to white. The best camera can only get about 13 steps of dynamic range. That's very scientific. So. When I shoot, I try and shoot with what's called a flat profile, which allows me to get as much of that as possible. And when you take the photo, it's a raw digital file. It's just information. And it doesn't look that great. All the colors are dull. Everything looks kind of subdued. All it is is, you gotta imagine, you're just capturing information. Right. So you, that's the job. You're trying to capture as much info as you can. Therefore, when we go into uh, our processing, that's when we begin to deal with the colors and so forth and we bring out what we want to bring out and to pull back what we don't want. So you can bring focus to the image, you can um, create or add color that's already there but you're bringing it up. And sometimes the best photographs were actually the mistake photographs. I have one right here actually and there's a shot here of this surfer and, and I was focused on him but this wave closer to the shore popped up and caused my camera to focus on that. But when I looked at it, I said, I love it because the guy's out of focus and this beautiful wave in the front is in focus and it just has this really interesting thing, you know? The other thing about photography is you're always trying to find a different perspective because you want to take people to a place they haven't been before. That's the valuable photograph when they can look at something and think, wow, I've never seen that before. I've never been there before. I love looking at these portraits and talking about them with you because these are like windows into time of your moments with God doing what you love to do. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you put a lot of work and a lot of time, a lot of effort to be there. Mm. And I get you to sit here and enjoy the fruit of that. Yeah. And that is such a cool thing to see. But do you have your favorite photo that you ever took? You know, oddly enough, the one that I really love is of, of, of this girl in Africa. She's living in a um, displaced people camp. She ran up, she saw the camera, she knew what it was. She ran up to me and she posed. She had this dress, like a what probably was a beautiful little white dress and frilly and so forth, but it was tattered, it was dirty, it was, it was brown. You know, but to her, it was everything. She looked beautiful. That's one of my most favorite shots. You know, it just speaks volumes to me. So usually Pete is shooting scenic landscapes, but today we're going where the action is. The Pipeline Masters, the most prestigious surf event in the world is happening right now. And I'm heading back out there so Pete can teach me a thing or two. Just gotta make one quick stop before we go. this guy mm. 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 Oh gosh. hey Pete hey Doug what are you doing man uh, I was just grabbing you a shave ice Doug you've got to come here it's now or never we're at the quarterfinals oh you got to get here or you're gonna miss the whole thing all right okay I'm coming all right get here now oh. Did I miss anything? Yeah, you missed tons. Let's 
let's do it about here, okay? okay? So get your camera out, man. Okay. Come on, dude. I'm coming. Lens cap. Always take yeah, the lens cap kind off. Of a... Yeah, that's important. Yeah. Okay. So you want to make sure you're shooting at a super high shutter speed. So you want to make sure you're like uh, try to get like 2,500th of a second. I've or never, higher. I've never done stills. Oh, okay. This should be exciting then. Okay, so all right, you're on so, your own. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so my... put it in the photo. Put it in the photo. Say, oh, look at that. That's so beautiful. Oh, I'm missing everything. Yeah. How many shots? I've taken already uh, 20 shots. So Wait. Where, where are you at? Okay, you... I'm coming. I take should. a picture. How's it look? Oh, it's terrible. So you're at four thousandth of a second f f five six. Four? What does that mean? Four thousand? Like it's gonna shoot? <laughs> it it shoots. Yeah. Like the thing will One, be open that. Four thousandth of a second. Yeah. So you're gonna capture everything nice and. That's, oh my and god! Here you go. I got one. That's when the technical stuff comes to play. So you might want it to be a really slow shutter speed, so he can you can feel the motion or it might be something that everything is super sharp so that everything is frozen in time. What is, what is aperture? What is shutter speed? Uh, ISO? All those things, how do they work? And all at the same time, make sure your exposure is right. Oh my gosh. That's a lot to keep track of. I know. Oh, that guy's going. Oh, oh nice. yeah. Yeah, nice. Very good. That is so fun. That looks good. Pipe is all about being in the barrel. The guys who are going to score are the ones that stay in the barrel as long as possible and get out. And it's one thing out. to get in, but to get out, well, that's another story, no right? No kidding. Yeah. Hey, so look, you know what I think we're going to do now is we're going to head over towards Pipe. Okay. You can see that sandbar where all the guys are standing. Over there? That's going to really put us out into the action. Are you okay? You, uh, we might get a little wet. I'm ready to rock. This is this is the carnival, dude. I mean, we've got all this stuff over here. Come check this out. That's pipe. This is pipe. Fully, fully crazy. So I've had a few where the waves create these incredible patterns. It looks like utter chaos, you know, the, the way the waters are moving and everything, and yet there's order in it too. So you find yourself thinking of, you know, hey, that's life lots of times. It looks like a mess, but it's actually beautiful. But it's only when you're back up from it and you can see it. There's a Hawaiian term that I use a lot, and it says it's uh, ho'onalo keakua, which means God makes waves. And for me, that really is, is a great line because it's, it's true on a lot of levels. And count down to the second world title of Gabriel Medina. Here we go. Eight, nine, No, you look like a dork. That's what I'm going for. Dork, Don't quit yeah, your day Steve, job. Thank you. She's on my team. Oh. I do look cute. Yeah, but she gets money for that. That's what so. we need. We need the woman's touch in this team. It feels so fresh to be out here. Yeah, it's beautiful. Like I, every time I come out here, I'm like, I wish I spent more time yeah. out here. 
hey, I live across the street from this and that happens all the time. Really? Well, why Even am I you? sitting in front of my computer? Let's go. You still struggle with I'm an oh. hour away. Yeah. Hey, look no. at, I'm complaining. Most people are a seven hour flight away. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's true. You get caught up in doing what you're doing and you forget, oh, there's a beach across the street. I feel like cool that's my relationship that? with God so much. You know, I'm <laughs> yeah. caught up in this and that. And, yeah. and then God says, hey, come here. Come here. Come spend some time with me. Very true. Very true. That's exactly right. Which is why I love what you get to do because yeah. your work is almost like putting yourself out there to be in that time with God. But as you start looking at the Word of God, you realize everything about creation is pointing to the Creator. So in a sense, it's really a romance between God and His people. He is romancing us. He's basically trying to, what's the word? He's courting us. He's trying to say, hey, here I am. This is for you. You know, and it's interesting, you know, you, some of the stuff we can't see unless we dive into the water and we see this beautiful tropical fish. You know, we have to take the time to see it. That's how God is at times, you know. He, he, there's so many hidden things and He's there to be discovered. So when I take photography, it's like that. Like, I, you know, when I go out, it's different every day because it's a moving landscape. As you can tell, I shoot a lot of waves because literally one day it looks one way, the next day I go back and it's totally different. And I'm always surprised. If there's anything that says the character in God, it's the ocean. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's massive, it's huge, it's beyond your comprehension, it's powerful. Yeah, it's mysterious. It's mysterious. Like you can't work it all out, that's true. But then it has these parts, these moments where it's peaceful, it's yeah. calm, it's tranquil. Yeah. You know, sometimes when you do photography, you gotta do it at the most inopportune times, like morning, way before, you know, it's still dark. But when I'm by myself, that's when I find myself saying, wow, Lord, this is amazing. And, I worship God. Wow, this is amazing, so beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes in life, you may be going through things and it feels like a mistake. Maybe you feel like you've made a wrong turn and you think, oh, life is over, I've, I've messed up. I don't know, I, I know I've gone through stuff. But then as you look with hindsight, isn't it a beautiful thing, hindsight? All of a sudden you realize, I'm glad I went through that because I learned so much from that and now it is, it's made me who I am today. You know, so regardless of what you've gone through, you can, you can go through the darkest times, which I have, I've gone through some dark times and coming out of it, God has taught me how consistent He is you know, and how, how much He's always there for you. There, I don't think there are any mistakes, even though they may look like a mistake. God turns things around. He always uses everything for good to those who love the Lord. And boom, that's it. Peter always has a heart of service. He always wants to impact other people and there's usually always a creative aspect to it. He has a real gift. He has, he sees, you know, creation. He sees what God has done and he captures it. You know what I mean? And it's just, that's, what's, that's what I think attracts people. And there's always a story behind it. You know, but I think there's a greater story behind it. You know, it's his stories behind it. He's not looking just for what what would be good and comfortable for him. He's looking at how he can leave an impact and a mark um, on the on the lives that come after him. It's about everything you do. You know, you're you're influencing people. You may not realize that, but it's it's everything you do. Whether it's photography, whether it's uh, cleaning toilets, it doesn't matter. Mowing the lawn, you know, it, it's you, you can be an influence. I think seeing God in the little moments, um, seeing Him in the big moments like the huge waves and the sunsets, but then also just in the quiet moments of you know sitting there waiting as your camera's in long exposure, shooting the stars, you know, talking about the vastness of God and all of that. It's amazing the things that God has brought me through and. You know, shooting music videos and, and uh, doing documentaries and, and now doing photography. I love it. It's just been a great life. You know, I always say, you know, well, if I had to go home today, I'd be satisfied. It'd be great, you know. You don't have a lot of time, so you got to try and get what you can as quick as you can. And I usually try and do as many different exposures as possible. Especially because I'm on a tripod, so I'm exposing for the sun now. Oh! 
<laughs> That's gonna look good. 